Hey guys, welcome to What I Eat in a Day to Lose Weight with PCOS. I'm gonna show you absolutely everything I put in my mouth today. Well, almost everything. We're starting off the morning with a cup of coffee. I actually overslept today and I was supposed to start streaming like an hour and a half ago. So I've gotta go start my live stream. Um, stayed up a little bit too late at the Christmas party last night. <laughs> so I'm gonna make some coffee and go stream. I am having my coffee with so delicious dairy-free coconut creamer. Simply five ingredients. So let's pour some coffee from the Mr. Coffee. I am not a fan of the Keurig coffees. We like just having a pot of drip coffee in this house. I also find them quite wasteful, but I know you can get the reusable ones and I think that's pretty cool. But we always just make a pot. So I do two tablespoons of the coconut milk creamer and that's about all I need. For a cup of coffee. Stir it all up and it's ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna go stream and after my live stream, then I'm gonna come in and cook some breakfast slash lunch. So see you in a bit. All right, so I just finished my live stream. It's 2.30 p.m. and I am starving. So I'm gonna make some breakfast at 2.30 p.m. Um, Cause I'll probably stay up till like 2 a.m. tonight. So I'm starting my day at like two o'clock <laughs> p.m. I'm gonna have bacon, eggs with spinach and mushrooms, and mandarin oranges. This is my favorite breakfast. I think I showed it to you guys in another vlog. Let's go cook. Mmm, bacon. Do you want any bacon, baby? While the bacon is cooking, I'm gonna chop up some onion. And sorry about the sound in the background, but the dishwasher is going like right beside me. I'm also going to use my monster kitchen knife because it's way sharper than my smaller one. And I don't really know how to sharpen knives. We do have a knife sharpener. I just don't really know how to use it. I probably should learn because my knives are getting really dull. Oh, I don't need a whole onion. I'm just going to do half an onion. I'm going to use Kerrygold butter. And this butter is usually really expensive, but I got it on sale for $1.79. I couldn't believe it. I bought like three sticks at my store when I saw that, or three boxes. Kerrygold is made from grass-fed cows. So it's a very healthy butter, and I like to buy the stick kind. And I'm just going to cut off about a half a tablespoon. to use in my eggs. Look how pretty it is. How golden. All right, so I'm gonna add in the onions to the pan. And I'm gonna cook these until they're soft and translucent, so just for a couple minutes. Then I'm gonna throw in baby spinach. Just a couple handfuls, it cooks down a lot. Now I'm gonna pour in two eggs beaten. Oh shit, shoot, oops. And we're gonna cook it till it's done. The only thing bad about this is I probably should have put some more oil in here because I feel like it's gonna stick really bad to the pan. <laughs> Bacon's all done. I only made two slices for me and two slices for Andrew. All right, it's pretty much done now. It did stick pretty bad. I'll have to soak this pan. So my eggs and bacon are done. Now I'm just gonna peel a couple of clementines. They're really small ones today, so I'm gonna have two. Right now, this is my favorite breakfast. I, uh, I usually go through phases with my breakfast and just eat something that I really like for a couple of weeks and then I get tired of it and move on to something else. So right now I'm really on an eggs and spinach kick with bacon and orange. All right, so here's the finished product. My delicious breakfast. Wow, look how the sun is shining into the water tank. That is cool. <laughs> so here it is. I'm about to dig in and eat my breakfast. It's like 3, 3 p.m. and I'm just having breakfast. So I'll probably have lunch about like, I don't know, whenever I get hungry in a couple hours. We'll have some lunch and then I'm going to cook dinner really late tonight. Andrew has to work until midnight. 
Mmm. So I probably will not cook until like 10 or so. All right, guys, I'm gonna enjoy my breakfast and I'll see you back here at lunch. Hey guys, it's 5.30 p.m. and I'm not really like hungry enough to have a meal, but I want something. So I'm gonna have a handful of grapes for a snack. And I'll probably wait another hour or two before I make something else. And I'm kind of thinking I might only have two meals today instead of three. We'll just see how I feel. And if you're wondering if I've been wearing my pajamas all day, the answer is yes, yes I have. And I don't plan to change now. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to wear your pajamas all day and that's okay. I give you permission to do the same. <laughs> so I'm going to have some of these great, some of these white grapes that we have left in our bowl. Oh my God, that's a lot of stems. Anyway, they're very sweet and juicy and good. So I'm just going to eat a handful or two of these. All right, it's about 7.30 p.m. now and I'm starting to get pretty hungry for like an actual meal. So I am gonna make chicken curry. Um, green Thai style chicken curry, I guess you could call it. I'm gonna be using my It Starts With Food cookbook because it has so many good recipes in it. And this is the first time I've ever, I'm ever trying this recipe. So let's cross our fingers that it doesn't suck because I'm about to spend some time in the kitchen on this thing. All right, first things first, I've got some chicken breasts from my butcher. I'm gonna have to cook these before I put them in the curry. So you can see my chicken cooker over there. It's actually a sandwich maker, but that's how I cook chicken because it just like grills it really quickly. So I'm gonna put a little olive oil in there and spread it around and then cook the chicken breasts. All right, the first chicken breast is done. So it's not like, I didn't very, really season it very much because it's gonna be seasoned up uh, when we get it in the curry. So I'm fine with it just being plain right now. I just need it to be cooked. Shit, I realize I just used the same tongs for the raw chicken that I used for the cooked chicken. <sighs> Oops, oh well, it's gonna cook more. Just add a little bit of salt to it. Nothing too crazy. I love cooking chicken this way because it doesn't take long and it's very, very easy. It only takes a couple minutes. It cooks it on both sides at one time. And then you have cooked chicken you can use in your recipes. Yeah, it might be weird to use a sandwich cooker to cook chicken, but it's no different from any other like countertop grill. It's just basically a George Foreman grill with sandwich marks on it, so it's fine. <laughs> but if you have a countertop grill or the ability to get one, I can highly recommend that as a way to easily cook chicken or other like kind of thin boneless meat for recipes. Works really well. While the chicken is cooking, I am gonna chop up some vegetables. I'm gonna start with the rest of these carrots. I have like two and a half carrots left in my bag of carrots, so I'm just gonna chop these up. This is just, this is a good recipe to use up vegetables that you have in your fridge that need to be used up, because you can really just put whatever you have in here and it's gonna be good. So I'm gonna use up the rest of these carrots and the peppers that I have and some broccoli. I'm getting low on produce because I've been using so much lately. So we're gonna have to go to the grocery store soon. I need more spinach. This is the last of my carrots. I'm about to use my last two peppers. About time for another grocery haul, y'all. Yeah, I'm gonna chop up these peppers. So I was just looking over the recipe and it says that the vegetables need to be cooked first. So what I plan to do is cook the vegetables in 
a, a large skillet, then set them aside, and then cook the curry in the same skillet. Because honestly, my other skillet is still dirty from breakfast, so I only have one. I only own two skillets. I really would like to get a nice cast iron skillet to cook eggs in. My mom would be so disappointed, my southern mother, if she knew that I was not using a cast iron skillet to cook my eggs. Look how much sharper this knife is. So that's, that's like one of the things on my wish list for my kitchen is to get me some cast iron skillets, but I kind of want to wait and buy anything like that until we move. Just because we don't have a lot of room in this kitchen and I'm trying not to bring anything else into this house if I can help it until we get a bigger place. Moving on to the red pepper. And another thing is I know I'm about to get some stuff for Christmas too. So that's gonna add to our stuff, which is fine. I can't help myself. I love stuff. I am not a hoarder. Uh, I come from a family of hoarders. Not my mom's side, but my dad's side of the family, man. They are some straight up hoarders. And my mom was not. My mom like, was a very much a minimalist. She liked things clean and tidy and not to have a lot of clutter. She hated what she calls knickknacks, which <laughs> I love me some knickknacks, okay? If, the, if they're the right kind, it has to be something I like. My knickknacks are things like crystals and witchy shit. But I don't consider myself a hoarder. I don't get emotionally attached to stuff. I have no problem throwing things away. I don't like my house cluttered. But I do like beautiful things. So I am constantly in a state of evaluating what I own and getting rid of what no longer makes me happy. I grew up in houses uh, with that were hoarded with useless crap and I really don't like that look. <laughs> Except for my mom's house. My mom's house was always nice. Always neat. She's much cleaner than, she was always much cleaner than me. But I grew up in, with my dad until I was about 12 or 13. I lived with my dad and my stepmom, and I didn't live with my mom. Luckily, I did not pick up the hoarding habits. And then I'm gonna use these broccoli florets that are already chopped up that I bought in my last grocery haul. So I just have to open those. All right, so I'm gonna put a little olive oil in with my carrots. And I'm gonna start cooking them first because carrots take longer to cook than the other vegetables. So I wanna cook these for a bit, then I'm gonna add in the peppers, and last I'm gonna add in the broccoli. Learned my lesson from last time when I put the broccoli and carrots in together, and I had to take the broccoli out because it was done way before. While the vegetables are cooking, I am going to chop up the chicken on my meat board here. So I'm just gonna chop it up into bite-sized pieces so that it'll be a nice size for the curry. It's pretty tender, so it's just like pulling apart really easy. Oops, shit. Almost dropped my camera in the sink. There we go. <laughs> now you can see it. This recipe does seem pretty easy. Um, the hardest part is just cooking the vegetables and chicken, but then assembling it is gonna be super easy. I love a good curry, and I haven't made one in a long time. You, I don't usually make chicken curry. I usually make more like a beef curry. I think I'm gonna make some rice to go with it as well. All right, the carrots have been cooking for a little bit. They're starting to get pretty soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the peppers. Lots of orange and red. Colorful. Oh my gosh, I forgot to cut that one up. Oops. <laughs> That's a long ass pepper strip. I'll have to take that out and cut it back up. So I'm gonna cook these. I'm gonna cook these for a couple minutes longer before I add in the broccoli. All right, the peppers and carrots are getting pretty done. Not completely done, but done enough to add the broccoli. So we're gonna dump it in. I'm just gonna throw this whole bag of broccoli in. Um, I'm kind of worried I'm using too many vegetables. 
So the, these recipes in the It Starts With Food cookbook are kind of vague and I like that in some ways, but in other ways, I feel like if you're not very experienced with cooking, it would be easy to screw it up. But it does say add two cups of vegetables per person. I don't know, does this look like four cups of vegetables to you? I have no idea. What I'm gonna do is cook the amount of vegetables I wanna cook, along with my one pound of chicken breast, mix it together in the curry sauce, and if I need more curry paste, I'll add it. That's kinda how I'm going about this. It'll all make sense in the end, I promise. So I'm gonna cook these vegetables um, until they're basically done, so a couple more minutes. The vegetables are done, so I, I set them to the side. Look how beautiful they look. And now we're gonna get started with the curry sauce. I'm gonna use some Thai Kitchen's coconut milk, unsweetened. Ooh, look how thick and creamy it is. Look at that jiggle. So the recipe says to use a quarter to a half cup per person. So I'm using about one and a quarter cup to start with. And if I feel like I need more, I have a little bit left. We're just gonna kinda wing it. Then I'm gonna use this Thai Kitchen green curry paste. The recipe says to use one to two tablespoons per person, so I'm gonna put in about four tablespoons. It smells really, really good, but I just hope this is gonna be enough sauce for all the chicken and vegetables that I have prepared. Meanwhile, I'm getting out the handy dandy rice cooker and I'm gonna start cooking some rice. I'm gonna have a very small portion of rice, um, but it's mostly for Andrew. I'm gonna put one cup of long grain white rice in here and two cups of water. I wish I had some chicken broth to uh, cook the rice in because that just makes it a bit more flavorful but we're just gonna have plain rice. It's rice flavored. Hopefully this sauce will, oh my god, flavor it up. I think I'm cooking it on too high of a heat. Okay, let's turn it down. Let's turn it down, it's getting a little bit higher than a simmer there. Now I'm gonna add in the chicken. It smells fantastic, but I am starting to worry about the amount of sauce. Got the chicken in and now let me add in the vegetables. That's a lot of veggies, y'all. I might have gone overboard with the vegetables. I kept that one long boy in there. He's a long, long man. I don't know, this is coating the meat and vegetables pretty well. It's, I think it's, I think it might be all right. Now we just basically have to heat everything through. So I'm gonna put the lid on and let it cook on very low heat until everything's warm. Oh my God, y'all. This looks and smells fan-freaking-tastic. I could not wait to eat this. And I think I actually got just the right amount of sauce. It doesn't seem to be too much or too little for my taste. Like, you might like yours a little bit runnier or whatever, but for me, I think this is perfect. And it's starting to bubble, so I think it's just about done. The rice isn't anywhere close to done, so I think I might just eat mine without rice because I'm hungry and this smells so good. I can't resist it. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to try this. All right guys, it's done. Here it is. Oh, it smells so freaking good. Um, I'm not eating any, mine with any rice. I'm just having mine just like it is. I think this would be really good with cauliflower rice too. Oh my God. Mmm. That is so good. <laughs> That is delicious and what a simple meal too. You know, I bet you could make this in literally like five minutes. All you need is coconut milk, green curry paste, some cooked chicken and cooked vegetables. If you bought like a rotisserie chicken or cooked chicken from the grocery store, you could just shred that up and use that. You wouldn't even have to cook it yourself. And you could easily use frozen microwavable vegetables and just steam them for a couple minutes. Mix it together with the coconut milk curry sauce and you've got a super easy dinner.
and it's so good and healthy. And then if you wanted to have rice with it, you could even get like minute rice or something or just cook some rice in the rice maker. You can make this really easy or you can go all out like I did and cook everything from scratch. This I this is a keeper. This is a new recipe that we are going to put in our rotation in my household because I absolutely love it. Well, I'm going to finish eating my dinner and it's nine o'clock right now. Um, I will probably have a snack in a couple hours, so I will see you guys back then. Well, it's about 11.30 p.m. and I'm going to be eating for the last time tonight. So I'm just having a small snack and then I'm going to go get ready for bed because I'm feeling a little bit tired. So here's what I'm having for my last meal. A sliced up gala apple, a couple slices of cheese, and a small handful of cashews. I hope you guys enjoyed this what I eat in a day video with PCOS to lose weight and get healthy. That was a mouthful. <laughs> um, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below and let me know if you enjoyed it. All right I'll see you later. Bye!